What's up, it's your boy Austin Rutherford. Today we're talking about a question that I get asked pretty often and the question is, do I need a real estate license to invest in real estate? There's a bunch of positives and negatives between the two and we're gonna break those down here today. People come to me all the time like, yo Austin, I'm getting my real estate license, I'm going to school to get licensed. And I ask them, okay, great, you know what, why? You know, what are your goals? They're like, man, I wanna do what you do, I wanna invest in real estate. Let me get this very, very clear right now. You do not need a real estate license to invest in real estate. But if you want to sell houses for other people, then absolutely, you do need a real estate license to represent others. But to invest for yourself, you do not need a real estate license. Now, again, there's positives and negatives to having one and being a real estate investor. And there's some loopholes that you got to be aware of. So. Some things you can and cannot say and can and cannot do if you are licensed. I was a licensed realtor before I ever started investing in real estate. And one quick thing I want to mention here while we're on this. Every state has slightly different rules and regulations regarding this, but most of them, majority of them are the exact same. Now you might be asking yourself, what's the difference? So just to make sure we're on the same page here, a real estate investor buys and sells real estates on his own behalf as an investment. So he's buying and flipping houses, he's flipping and selling houses, he's buying rental properties, he's selling rental properties, he's buying and selling houses for himself. A realtor, on the other hand, is when you represent other people. So a realtor goes out there and represents buyers to buy their house and represents sellers to sell their house. They're not buying for themselves, they're representing other people. So if you're representing others, you need a real estate license. If you're buying for yourself, you can buy whatever you want without a real estate license for yourself. So down to the nitty gritty, the benefits of being a licensed realtor and investing in real estate at the same time is that you have access to the MLS, the multiple listing service, which is where majority of properties go to sell, to buy and sell. That's what it's the platform that realtors use. So you get data that's current right now here today the most up-to-date data means that you can pull the best comps, you can pull the best ARV, you can make the best decisions because your data is there. There's a couple other ways of getting access to the MLS, but this is by far the easiest because you're licensed, you have access immediately you have access to the MLS. You don't have to go through anybody else. Another benefit is being able to move quickly. So sometimes houses pop up on the MLS that could be a good investment opportunity. And instead of sitting around and waiting for your agent to, to call you back to set up a showing in 24 or 48 hours, as soon as that pops up on your feed, you can go to the house, drive, into the, drive to the property, go look at it and submit an offer before an agent even potentially calls you back. Especially with houses on the MLS, you have to be quick because everybody's aware of the property. You have to move very, very quickly. So if I'm licensed and you're not, we both get the fee, we both get the notification that the property hit the market. I'm at the house making an offer within an hour before your agent even calls you back. And you're not even gonna see the house for another day or two because your agent's probably busy. I've bought houses from the MLS in a matter of hours because it hit. I went to go see it, I made an offer, and I got it in contract before anybody else even had an opportunity to go and see the property. So having a license gets you into those opportunities faster because you don't have to wait on anybody else. And I hear people say all the time, well, you know, there's no deals on the MLS. Yes, they're, they're few and far between because there's so much competition on the MLS, but there are deals on the MLS. I know people who buy houses every month from the MLS because they're agents and they make five, 10, 20, 30 offers a week on properties. And most of them get thrown out the window, but sometimes they get accepted. And if an agent's representing you, they're not gonna write 30 offers a week for you to get one accepted. But if you have your license yourself, you can do whatever you want. You can write as many offers as you want to get that one deal accepted. Another benefit, if you wanna save some money, on the, if you're buying off the MLS, you get paid a commission, you get paid money to buy a house, so you're saving money. And when you flip a house to go and sell it, you don't have to pay a commission if you list the properties yourself. So if you're a licensed realtor, let's say you bought a property and then you renovated it and you're selling it for $300,000 now. Instead of paying a realtor 3% to list it for you, which is the equivalent of $9,000, you can list it yourself and add that $9,000 to your bottom line, to your profit. Do a few of those a year and it can add up very, very quickly to saving a ton of money for having your own license. So when I started out, like I said, I was the one, I was my own agent. I wanted to save as much money as possible. I wanted to penny pinch every, every which way. But over time, as we got busier and busier and busier and busier, 
we ended up now we end up using realtors to sell our houses you know we negotiated a good rate with them so we're not paying out the wazoo they're getting multiple listings every single month from us they're providing a tremendous amount of service they're saving me a ton of time they're the ones negotiating they're the ones doing all the paperwork and all they do is call me and ask for a decision and i put a barrier in between i used to be the one that bought the house that renovated it and that sold it and that represent and was the agent on it uh, it's not necessarily the best thing if it's you, 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 because there's no, there's no in between. When you're selling a house and you're talking to an agent, they know that you're the one that did the house. You're the investor. So they're going to ask you more direct questions. And, and for me, you know, sometimes I fold it. I was like, all right, you know, I'll fix that. Oh, crap. You know, you're right. You know, I, I yes, I'll, I'll put a new fridge in there because it doesn't fit. And I was the rehabber. Now it's my agent having those conversations saying, you know, he's not going to do this. There's no chance on earth he's going to do this. You know, if you guys are serious about this house, you know, make an offer, you know, as it stands today. It's a barrier between the two and it makes my life a whole lot easier. Another benefit is that you can now list houses for other people. When you start investing, you'll realize that you come across a lot of properties when you start marketing that people don't want to sell for a discount or don't have to sell for a discount. You know, their houses are 100% turnkey. They've kept it in great condition. And really the only option is, is for them to sell it on the MLS and get the most money for the property. If you're a licensed agent, you can list those properties for them. So you can either convince them to let you list their house with, which sometimes this is a rather difficult because you just came to them trying to buy their house for 60, 70 cents on the dollar. So a $300,000 house, you're trying to buy for like 200 grand, 220. So they might not take the best to that, the other option is, is simply saying, hey, you know, it sounds like your house is in tremendous condition. You know, I definitely understand why you're asking, you know, full retail value because, you know, you've kept up with the property. And honestly, you know, the houses that we buy are so distressed and usually need a ton of work. And that's how we get the prices that we need to get to be profitable. What I'm going to do for you, I'm going to refer you to my friend, brothers, cousins, aunt, whatever you want to say. I'm going to refer you to somebody we work with every day that can actually get you that $300,000, if not a little bit more for the property. So I'm gonna have them give you a call and get you top dollar for the house. So you just referred that listing to an agent. The agent calls them and says, hey, you know, I think I can get you 320 for the house. They go to the meeting, they get the listing appointment, they list the house for them, they sell it, and they make $10,000 in a commission check. So for me referring that deal to them, we get a 30% kickback. So if they make $10,000, we're getting paid $3,000 of that because we're the one that introduced them in the first place. So when you're a licensed agent, you're allowed to get referral fees. They're allowed to pay you a referral fee or a commission. So that's how we set it up. We refer people that have a tremendous house that want full retail value that want to sell to agents to collect additional monies. Another benefit is that it gives you some credibility. It gives you some instant credibility. You know, now it, it doesn't really matter because, you know, I've already built the name or you, whatever you want to call it. But at the beginning, for some reason, all agents don't like investors and all investors don't really like agents. But if you can say, hey, you know, I'm a licensed real estate agent, it just gives you some credibility when talking with other agents sometimes because they just think that you may have more credibility or, or more knowledge. So it, it can get you into some of the doors that you may not have been able to get into if you're simply just a real estate investor. Now, on the flip side, there are some negatives or some drawbacks for, with having a license and being a real estate investor at the same time. First of which is there's some liability issues. So anytime you buy or sell a house for yourself, you have to disclose that buyer is a licensed realtor or that seller is a licensed realtor or that member of the selling entity is a licensed realtor. If you own 1% of the, the LLC, you have to disclose that you're a licensed realtor because the board looks at it as if you're educated, you're educated on real estate, the buyer or seller is not educated and they don't want you to take advantage of them. So you have to disclose that in any listing agreement, any purchase and sale agreement, you gotta disclose it in all forms so everyone is aware that you're a professional and that you are a licensed real estate agent. And you may be thinking, well, wasn't, wouldn't that scare a bunch of people off? No, I've been doing this for six years now and it never has. I've never had an issue disclosing that I'm a licensed real estate agent. No issues ever. Now, another negative, some sellers don't like realtors. They say things like, well, there's no way in the world I would pay you 3% to sell my house. Or what do you think? You're going to get paid for doing absolutely nothing. There's a, a negative connotation to realtors sometimes from sellers. You know, that's very few and far between, but that could be a negative, but you can easily spin that and say, look, I'm not coming to you from a realtor perspective. I don't want to list your house. I don't want you to pay me anything, 
I want to pay you to sell the property and not pay a single penny in fees because I'm going to be paying all the fees. So you can instantaneously turn that to make it a benefit to you versus them being upset that you're trying to talk to them as a realtor. And another thing you can spend on that, you know, if they're talking to a bunch of other people or they just don't like that you're a licensed realtor for whatever reason, you can call them and say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I am a licensed realtor. I have to disclose that to you because the state of Ohio or the state of wherever you're at forces me to disclose that I'm a licensed agent. Along with that, I'm held to a higher standard than any of the other investors out here. And I have to be honest with you, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. So you can spend that to be a positive for you. And at the end of the day, you do have a bigger microscope on you. If you're licensed, you're already on the radar. So if you go out there and do something wrong or screw somebody over, you're going to have a way bigger microscope looking down on you than the other investor might have because you are a licensed realtor. So again, if things go wrong, you're probably going to get slapped with a fine. You know, fines in business are unfortunately part of the nature. You know, if you go out there and make a million dollars, but you get slapped with a $10,000 fine, it's not the end of the world. So, you know, you do have a bigger microscope on you at times. And look, at the end of the day, all these negatives that we're talking about, if you go out there and do the right thing and be honest with people and don't lie to people and don't deceive people, you know, if you're looking out for their best interest and you're not lying, you're good. If you do business the right way, a lot of these negatives won't even exist. So back to the question at the beginning of the video, should I get my real estate license? It, my answer is it depends. It depends on what your goals are. If you want to buy and sell houses for other people, then absolutely you need a real estate license to be able to do that. But if you want to be a landlord and buy rental properties for yourself, then no, you don't need a real estate license. You can buy houses for yourself without a real estate license. But if you're telling me like, look, I'm new, I wanna have a full blown real estate investment company. I wanna have agents that work under me. I wanna wholesale houses. I wanna flip houses. I wanna do everything in real estate. Then you probably wanna get a real estate license. So what about me currently? I still do have my real estate license. The reason I have my license is because I had my license and I was selling houses for other people before I became an investor for myself. At the place I'm at now, if I didn't have my license, I would not go back and get my license because I've been there, I've done that, I've learned the ropes, I've done all those things and I have the credibility. But at the beginning, it usually does not hurt to get your real estate license. Getting it can be a benefit and not having it can be a negative. There's no right or wrong here. You know, there's benefits and negatives to having a license and there's benefits and negatives to not having a license. So that's just a decision that you're gonna have to make for your personal business at the end of the day. And when I got my license years ago, I had to go into a classroom to get my license. Now you can get your license from online courses. So it's a lot easier now and you can do it virtually and you can do it at your own pace. In my opinion, there is no negative to having your real estate license. So. Comment below, make sure you hit that like button. YouTube loves the algorithm on the like button. If you could hit the like button, if this added value in any way, please do so. Comment below, let me know your thoughts. If you're an agent, if you're not an agent, why or why not? And make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. See you on the next one. Peace.